Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, you should have finished up answering these questions um, to help you with our discussion today about the cultural and contextual considerations of winning from no, um, the techniques that are interesting, the issues between the work and yourself, how the time and place matter, and what was kind of easy and difficult to understand. Before we begin our discussion, I just want to remind you of your rubric that you have in front of you. You need to make sure you um, address the questions using evidence from the text. Um, you, your comments need to show that you've understood the text. Take initiative in participating and help each other out. Um, if you don't understand something, ask a question about it and then uh, another classmate should answer that. Um, make sure you're taking notes as people are talking so we can help enhance our learning. Um, and do I have someone to start us off? Maybe with this second question, Were there, was there anything that was kind of um, difficult to understand in relation to the social and cultural issues? Well, when Kaylee was presenting, um, Suzanne and Becca could get it from France and because they were figured out. I was, um, I questioned um, how his um, Beckett's psychosomatic disorder was like shown throughout the book because I don't really see it or I don't know where it could, it could be found. Um, I think you could definitely see that on page 8, when page 7 and page 8, when Estragon's complaining about something um, painting him in his boot and Vladimir is talking about um, like a urinary pain. And um, I think it, it also kind of, um, like a specific quote that Vladimir says, hope deferred make it the something sick who said that. And that relates back to um, the psychosomatic disorder that um, Beckett experienced after escaping um, the resistance movement. And um, it also kind of outlines the mind-body problem in which the mind and the body are inseparable as DD um, is, um, or Vladimir represents the mind as he addresses and um, the the psychosomatic disorder and his pain is um, is an internal pain that has an actual cause and um, Estragon his pain um, is at an extremity and it's an empty pain as there is um, nothing in his boot so it kind of goes back to the the pain stemming from the mind and then being manifested with the body. Well, further answering question two, I thought that the book would be, was slightly more difficult to understand because uh, we weren't alive during the time that uh, you wrote this book, but uh, as far as my understanding of World War II and Ashley's explanation, I thought that there was a very similar relationship with how Germans would um, constantly be hiding and waiting in unoccupied areas to escape the Nazis. And, um, be traveling around a lot, so it related to uh, Didi and Gogo how they would um, how they are waiting in this unoccupied space, um, waiting for a Godot, but we don't know exactly specifically what they what it is that they're waiting for, um, or what they are trying to get away from. And then even further, um, the uh, the Germans who occupy Paris and uh, generally French, um, the it can be related to. Um, Gogo's beatings because uh, he didn't know what for. He didn't know. Um, he didn't know if he did anything wrong, and that's how generally a lot of Nazis would be towards the French. They looked down on the French. They despised them. They um, beat them for no reason. So it's just more support. So if we're talking about the novel in the context of war, then what do you think um, the waiting for Godot? What do you think Godot represents then? Going back to what Julian said. Godot, in that sense, would almost be freedom and the relief that war because we always see them come back and they just have to sit there and they're constantly coming around and everything's going on around them and they even mention that the dough will make things right again in the book so I see it's even in World War II as the allies coming in and someone fighting you can actually fight the Germans and they go free. But then why would it end with them still waiting when um, the book was published in 1954 after the war Guardian? Um, I think them ending off with a waiting note and not really finding a resolution is kind of a representation of how Beckett felt when he was waiting to leave occupied France. They were trying to get out of the um, kind of constant watch of the Nazis. Kind of felt like he was never going to get out, even though he kept trying. Or the idea of the beat generation, or the um, or uh, the lost generation after World War One. Um, 
how they never truly escaped from the horrors of World War II in their mind that uh, always weighed down on them. So, uh, so Godot could be represented as physical freedom from the Nazis or mental freedom from the aspect of World War II itself. Also, going along with the um, with Godot representing the freedom from the war, on the last page of the novel on page 60, um, Estragon says, and he comes and Vladimir responds, will be saved. Which could represent uh, their uh, getting saved from the war. Could um, it represent something else besides the war? What do you think um, Godot could also, since you brought up this idea of what Godot represents, what else could it be besides the saving from the war? What other functions do we see him? There's this idea that peace can never be really attained and um, that we'll forever be waiting for it and the, um, almost the inconsistencies that um, life really is, that there's no um, finality, there's no, there's not going to be um, a sense of peace and um, even with the same quotation that um, Hannah brought up, um, we'll be saved, but um, there's that question, is salvation really even possible in, um, in the play or even in our life? So what do you think that the messenger, the boy that Godot always sends to speak for him, what do you think he represents in relation to Godot? Maybe if Godot were to represent God, he would represent an angel of God, uh, or possibly somebody if Estragon and Vladimir are in hell or in the closed door as mentioned in the... Um, the play called No Exit, um, the boy or the angel could have been somebody that once inhabited earth with them, but he went up to heaven while there, stuck in this never-ending looping hell. I think that's what the boy would represent. Um, so what then can we make that um, there's a suggestion that the one boy is beaten by the I was a little bit confused about that while I was reading the book. I didn't know why that was happening. Well, there's some confusion between whether or not it's the same boy returning every time. So it could kind of be like the duality, maybe, of Jesus and Christianity. Like, one part of him was a messenger from God, and the other part was beaten metaphorically by humanity. Do you think that because Gogo and Didi are so uncertain of their surroundings and settings and who exactly Godot is, do you think there's a possibility that the boy doesn't exist at all and it's just an illusion that they created in their own mind? Because they're so unsure whether it's the same boy or not. It definitely could be a creation of their own mind. Relating it back to the play No Exit, for the final line, we're talking about how hell is created by humans and along that lines. And then we see them even within this play, especially in Act 2 when they're talking. And Estragon goes, what am I to say? And Ogden says, say I am happy. And they pretty much force themselves to be happy, but then they force themselves to be down again. We see them manipulating the world around them and how they view it. So they could definitely have changed it to make it their own personal hell or their own personal heaven with the boy. I saw that as well. And um, on page 36, so it's the title page for Act 2. In italics, it says next day, same time, same place. So I kind of saw this as a bit of a um, sort of, not, not exactly a foreshadowing, but almost a little summary of the book itself, literally. So each sentence has two words in it, and they're all couplets, and then it's same place, same time, next day. So it does. Everyone knows that it does move on, but they don't move. So as as in no exit, nobody moved, but everything inside it changes. So this could also represent an emotional struggle for Beckett, considering that while he was uh, not in exile, but when he was uh, fleeing Paris and he was in hiding and waiting, this literally could suggest how confused he was about everything. He was also sick and his health was declining. So I think that that's also something that's very difficult to understand about the text in relation to uh, Beckett, because um, obviously this is very absurdist. Um, so not only that, but the fact that he took his emotion and those kinds of feelings from that kind of experience that not many people can experience is probably going to be very difficult to interpret 
in such a sense that of the war of his motion and things like that? Um, I find it interesting what Miriam was saying about time and place, and it kind of reminds me of um, the presentation, uh, Delaney's presentation on uh, the play, the genre scenes play, um, what those three unities of time, place, and action. Uh, where else do we see the influence of those three unities in Waiting for Godot, and what is that influence? I know that's a loaded question. So take a second um, and think about it. Maybe go back to those notes by that we have with John Racine, and take a second or two and think about those three unities of time, place, and action. Where do we see it in Godot, and what's its purpose? And I'd like to hear, perhaps, from somebody who hasn't spoken um, that much, maybe Shannon or Hannah or um, Sophia, for an example, if one of the three want to start us off. <coughs> well, I thought it was interesting how um, uh, John Singh's play, um, Dr. Lane said that it placed uh, emotions and psychological aspects over action and how um, the time and place were, uh, they seem to be more important in the Godot over action, like how, um, how Estragon and Vladimir, um, they would always think about leaving um, this same time and place, but they never could actually go. I think it's also interesting how um, in almost all of the plays that were mentioned in the presentations, um, they're very simple. Um, there's very few characters. Um, the, the setting is uh, kind of minimal. Um, so why do you think that Beckett chose to use this style of presenting his ideas um, in Waiting for Godot? I see his life on the farm after escaping Paris um, reflected greatly in all these plays in Godot. Um, you can see like uh, a very rural isolationist uh, style where it's essentially just him and his, uh, and his wife and um, but then that is completely twisted around by uh, by the effects that uh, the surroundings had on him in his bad health. Well, with the um, simplistic characters and the simplistic um, setting it should, left the um, interpretation of the, of the play to up to the readers as Dante um, influenced on Beckett, and it gives um, an unstructured train of thought and allows the readers to interpret what they want of it, but we don't ever know if there is a um, certain um, plot or purpose of what is going on, which gives, which is the simplistic part of the book. I think he also uses the simplicity because of his simplistic views of humanity. He views people as very not very deep. I think he looks at them more on the surface, um, like with lines such as an Estragon says, it's not obvious. And the constant name calling of imbecile. And just things that show that Beckett thinks that people are simple and their purpose is not that great in life. I also think that they might be, uh, he might be showing the complexity of uh, human thought, maybe emotion as well. Um, but like I always, whenever I think about the simplicity, I end up thinking about the carrots and the radishes, um, or the carrot and the radishes. Um, I have, it's very difficult to understand why they are even there and why they're in his pocket. So the the very idea that he takes something like really randomly and just pops up in the middle of the book and then shows it up again as if to create some kind of original sense of familiarity. It's it's almost contradictory to how a reader should react to a book. We should understand what's happening and why, and then we never know what's going to happen next. I think it's um, interesting what you both are saying about um, the name calling, how that repeats, and this idea of the carrot repeats, and almost to give the readers something to hold on to in a very maybe meaningless book, um, and maybe that something, that little things in life is where the meaning is. So I'd like you to take the next um, minute and just compose a final thought on your, on your paper about what do you think the purpose of this 
novel is, or this play, sorry. What is the purpose of this play? And then we'll begin our discussion again with that question. So take a minute for that. Even better, try to 